get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise <laughs> Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, and many more and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. I want to thank Dan Cushell for introducing me to today's phenomenal guest. Today we have Dr. Jeff Spencer, founder of The Champion's Blueprint. Dr. Spencer is a former Olympian and over the last 40 years he has worked. You don't look that old. He last 40 years, he's worked alongside some of our generation's greatest achievers, Sir Richard Branson, Tiger Woods, Lance Armstrong, U2, Olympic gold medalist, just to name a few. And it's not often I feature a fellow chiropractor as well. People call him the corner man to world champion athletes and business leaders. Dr. Spencer, thanks for joining me. Well, it's just a pleasure. Thank you, uh, Jeremy. Just uh, really just so grateful to be here. You know, since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask, what's been the lowest point and then how you push through it? That's a good question. I think that, yeah, for sure. A couple, I mean, I would say a real low point for me was in 99 uh, when I had severe mercury poisoning. and But I didn't know that. And, you know, it was misdiagnosed. Oh, yeah, I got adrenal fatigue. And then you got a systemic mold infection. I just felt like everybody was guessing. Hmm. You know, and the symptoms of that could be ALS, it could be MS, I mean, bad stuff. And so that was very difficult for me because, you know, as an Olympian, if there was an opponent that was tangible that I could see and I could smell, then I could just get better and beat him up in the ring, you know? Right. But this wasn't like this. I was completely subservient to the very dramatic and pronounced and severe collapse of health that I had where I was literally, I was not able to function because of this and to, to face the fact that I may have to live like this the rest of my life, which is a possibility. I've seen nightmares happen to people. That's what life is, you know? Right. And so facing that was very difficult and wondering the path out of it. And is there a path out of it was difficult because it wasn't a, an earthly opponent. It was a different thing altogether. That was for sure my, 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 my low point. Oh. For sure. How did you finally get past it or how did they discover what, what it was i was actually i was in um, australia for the 2000 olympics to help the u.s cycling olympic team there and i was there two weeks early to do a series of nutrition lectures throughout the australia the, the six major cities five or six major cities there and so my host i told him about my experience and what i was experiencing so why don't you come to my homeopath and so we called him up and they just happened to have uh, an appointment available that Thursday afternoon. It was Thursday afternoon, so I went and she said they got mercury poisoning. Wow. Because they, they did this uh, testing, it was called transdermal testing, where they, they they tested my acupuncture points against things that have been known to produce these symptoms and they were able to correlate the problem with my body response to it and that's mm -hmm. how the first suspicion was uh, was identified. So they created a remedy and actually felt better and so when I got back to the U.S., I found the best person in the U.S. that was qualified to be able to help me overcome the mercury poisoning. And eventually, uh, it took three to five years to get truly well. And mm -hmm. I, I still suffer some of the effects of that. I'll never get over. But to say that that was the path. And so the learning curve from that was is that, you know, life is unexpected. Right. So make sure you do something of value. It's, it's not just about do whatever you want. It's about do something of value that outlives you. Yeah. So that there's a permanent immortal reminder and a footprint of you yeah. about what you do with your life that calls people to a higher game. Yeah. Also, you can't live life alone. If I didn't have the right doctor and I didn't have the right support system, yeah. I probably never would have recovered. You, everyone needs a team. No one wins alone. Right. And then thirdly, you got to have a blueprint. If you don't have a blueprint that shows you how to negotiate life you know, like this, I've done all the heavy lifting for everybody. It took 50 years to figure this out. Then you're just guessing at your life. And you know, one thing I can assure you that whenever you go into the jungle, make sure you've got a blueprint or a map. Don't go into the jungle without a blueprint or a map. Yeah. Because it's a it's a dangerous place. There are predators out there. It's dangerous. You know? So you've got to yeah. have targets, you've got to have team, you've got to have a blueprint. 
yeah. if you got that stuff. And you got to have reverence for your life and decide that you're going to do something with it that creates immense value where you honored your talents. Yeah. That's what I learned from it. Yeah. So the last question is, what's been the proudest moment? Oh, there's no question. The adoption of our daughter. We had, like, they consider it a miracle adoption. She was 10. This is uh, almost seven years ago. Mm. She was up for adoption for five years, which means what? There's something wrong with me because I'm not adopted. Right, right. And just the difficulty and the challenges that she faced from where she came from are indescribable. But the point is, is that you can love anybody. You just do it. Yeah. You don't need a special occasion. It's not about you, you know? It's about the value that you bring to them. And so she just turned 17 last Thursday. And so if you ever doubt the value of what you do as a human, the things you say are the things that you do, adopt a kid. Yeah. You know, it's not about us. It's not about our winning for us. It's about, you know, how do you step into your talent? How do you step into your legacy? Yeah. You know, what is it that you're doing that has a lasting and permanent effect on people? You know, those are like the lessons for me. And so yeah. no question about it. We're the lucky ones with our daughter. Right. Has it been easy? No. Uh, have there been extremely difficult moments on a variety of levels? Yeah. But what those difficult moments do, they force you to make a choice about what you place a value on. Yeah. And they force you to have to find a way to live into that value and make a contribution and to be able to hold your ground and to be able to support and protect your territory. Look, if life's too good, there's no reason to change. But if there's no reason to change, then you stay stuck in your habits that aren't serving you well. Yeah. And everybody needs something that's bigger than themselves to call them to a higher game. And for sure, you know, it was our daughter. Where is she from? Uh, Columbia. Okay. So was the process difficult to get to that point to for the adoption? It took about two years. Yeah. It, it wasn't particularly difficult, actually. I mean, my wife did a lot of the work. You know, it took persistence. Yeah. You know, but but is it roulette? Of course it is. Yeah. You know, when you when you adopt somebody that's ten year olds, you know, people say damaged goods. Who wants to who wants to adopt a ten year old? Damaged goods. I don't want that. Right. You know, there's 150 million kids that need homes. You know, so I mean, there is a, a huge roulette factor to it. But you know, you know, welcome to life. There's a roulette factor to it anyhow. I mean, right. perhaps one of the biggest roulettes is is being unwilling to explore what life's possibility is so you live a life of non-commitment right i mean to me that you know that's that's the tragedy so yeah. you know again that was our path was it tough there have been some rough moments for sure you know our, our daughter's like tarzan's daughter she came from a jungle it's it's different you know the, the scaling and the scope of learning how to appreciate what's out there is just extraordinary and it, yeah. here's the deal it's like you got to have something to get up to that's bigger than you right because if it's all about you then just just prepare for a miserable life where it's never enough you're always going to feel a void yeah. you know you just feel like there's no purpose no rhyme no reason you know and so for us uh, it was r unquestionably the right thing that that we needed at that time to not just make a contribution but I think to call us to a, to a higher game. Mm -hmm. She's forced us to have to go to places that we needed to go to, to, to be better servants of life's opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, without without a question, there's no no question. Yeah. I'm sure you've learned so much from her. What's the biggest lesson that you've learned from her? Two 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 things. Can I have two? You could have as many as you like. You know, number one is that she's amazing and resilient. Yeah, meaning that. You know, you think you've got a bad, I, I swear, everybody on this call, your worst moment was her life mm. every second. Mm. You know, you, you don't, you don't want to live a day that she lived in certain circumstances. But yet, she's been able to find her way back. It's like, you know, you, you tear a spider web down, you go back and you rebuild it the next day. Because right. that's what you got, right? Right, right. So sometimes that's about all we got. Yeah. So the other thing I learned is that your love can't conquer other people's challenges. That's between them and life. Hmm. You know, there's a certain battle. There's a certain thing that we all have to fight on our own yeah. that nobody can do for us. You know, yeah. we, can, we can at best do the best that we can. And we're all human. And everybody brings into this world something that is palpable in terms of a temperament or right. a disposition or a proclivity that 
you can't say it was genetic. You can't say that it was learned. They were born with it. Right, right. And if you look at life's um, different phases of development, everybody's kind of got to go through it, and they've got to fight their own battle. Yeah. You no, know? and you can come in with a hope. You can come in with a an intention, but at the end of the day, you know. People have got to fight their own battle, and there's only so much that we can do. Yeah, that's really powerful. I appreciate you sharing that. And it reminds me of one of the interviews you gave of uh, one of your mentors that gave you advice when you were 18. I remember you saying that. What advice did he he walk in and tell you? Yeah, yeah. I I actually thought about that as a pivotal moment that I kind of went with the mercury poisoning. But yeah, I was having a bad day, you know, and... uh, he said, would you like a helping hand? And I said, God, this guy, how does he know? You know, it's like if there's every day to ask me, today's the day. Right. And I said, yeah, man, yeah, today's the day. And he looked, he said, you sure you want a helping hand? Yeah. He said, well, if you want a helping hand, you got one at the end of each arm. He turned around, he walked out of the room. Yeah. It was the right thing. I knew it and he knew it. He couldn't save me. It's like I had to fight the battle myself right. yeah. to, to learn that I had what it took to be able to engage life's challenges. And he wasn't going to interfere with that. Right. He did the right thing. He walked away. Right. I knew it. So did he. Life pivotal moment, man. Yeah. Dr. Spencer, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This has been absolutely phenomenal. And everyone should check out drdrjeffspencer.com. Uh, for the champion's blueprint oh, well thank you so, now there's one of us and all the creation and we should never forget that so thanks for the privilege and the opportunity to be yeah, able to share with yeah. the yeah. thanks now, Jeremy. thank you i appreciate it you got it what i got you can't buy it resides between my eyes walked through the fire came out better on the other side see life's like a beach if you find the sand right now i'm feeling like a hundred grand 